U.S. Space Force has started operating a new offensive weapon system. The weapon is an upgraded version of a ground-based satellite communications jamming system. The Space Force declared it had reached initial operational capability with the Counter Communications System Block 10.2 or CCS B10.2 on March 9. This is an important milestone for the newly formed service. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how U.S. Space Force will knock out rival satellite communication using Counter Communication System. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder has been kind enough to offer all Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. The United States Space Force USSF, is the Space Warfare Service Branch of the United States Armed Forces. The sixth and youngest branch of the U.S. Armed Forces, it was the first branch of the military established since the formation of the independent U.S. Air Force in 1947. The direct antecedent of the Space Force, Air Force Space Command, was formed on the 1st of September 1982 with responsibility for space warfare operations. The National Defense Authorization Act of 2020 redesignated Air Force Space Command as the U.S. Space Force and established it as an independent branch of the U.S. Armed Forces on the 20th of December 2019. Teams and assets previously assigned to Air Force Space Command now form the core of the new service which is at the moment still in the process of being set up. As of 2020, the only nation with an independent space force is the United States. Satellites are one of the most important assets for a nation. They play a vital role in civilian and military communications. Military satellites are used for gathering intelligence as well as they can monitor and provide early warning against missile launches by a rival nation. Military satellites also provide guidance to missiles, aircraft, and warships to name a few. So if satellites of a particular nation are jammed, it will become handicapped in a conflict. The first iteration of the CCS or Counter Communication System entered U.S. Air Force service in 2004 and it's now been transferred to the Space Force. Viewers may note that the Harris Corporation, which merged with L3 Technologies last year to form L3 Harris Technologies, had received the contract from the Air Force to develop this upgraded variant of the counter communication system known as Block 10.1 upgrade in 2014. Last year, Harris also received a $72 million contract to begin developing the new iteration, the Block 10.3 variant. Reports indicate that the U.S. Air Force had at least seven complete CCS packages which are designed for quick deployment. Lieutenant Colonel Steve Brogan, the Combat Systems Branch Material Leader within the Space Force's Space and Missile Systems Center SMC, Special Programs Directorate, said in an official news piece about the system in January 2020, CCS is the only offensive system in the United States Space Force arsenal. This upgrade puts the force in Space Force and is critical for space as a warfighting domain. The various versions of the system consist of trailer-mounted dishes and supporting equipment like generators. The exact work of CCS is classified, but what is known is that it interferes with the transmissions from enemy communication satellites, disrupting the signal flow. Reports indicate that the effects of CCS are reversible, meaning that when the jammer shuts off, the target satellite would go back to functioning as normal. 
This is different from the use of kinetic means like anti-satellite missiles, which are possessed by few countries. The US itself was the first to possess this kind of capability. The US carried out the first ASAT test in 1959. The anti-satellite weapon had a range of 1,100 miles, or 1,770 kilometers. A mock test was carried out in which a dummy attack on the Explorer 6, which was at an altitude of 156 miles or 251 kilometers, was successfully executed. Relatively recently, in February 2008, it was reported that the United States Navy fired a RIM-161 standard missile 3 ABM as an anti-satellite weapon to take out a satellite which was operationally malfunctioning. The Soviet Union, after conducting a series of seven tests from 1963 to 1971, declared its system operational in 1973. The weapon was designed to approach the target satellite, then detonate an explosive that would damage the target with shrapnel. In recent times, on the 18th of November 2015, Russia tested an anti-satellite missile known as PL-19 Nudal for the first time. The same missile was tested again in May 2016. In January 2007, China successfully destroyed a defunct Chinese weather satellite, FY-1C. As per reports, the mission was executed by an SC-19 ASAT missile with a kinetic kill warhead. FY-1C was a weather satellite orbiting Earth in polar orbit at an altitude of around 865 kilometers or 537 miles, having a mass of about 750 kilograms or 1,650 pounds. Last year, India became the fourth country to have this kind of ability. The satellite that was destroyed is believed to be Microsat-R as per Indian media reports. It was a medium-sized military imaging satellite weighing 1,630 pounds or 740 kilograms that was launched by the Indian Space Research Organization in January. Microsat-R was in low Earth orbit at an altitude of 186 miles or 300 kilometers. The destruction of satellites using kinetic means creates a lot of debris in space which could even harm friendly satellites. This brought to the fore the risk of this approach. CCS mitigates this risk. The United States might also find itself in a scenario where it's tactically more desirable to temporarily shut down an adversary satellite than to permanently do so. For these reasons, the U.S. military increasingly favors softer methods of denying an enemy space assets than knocking their satellites out of the sky. We're not going down that path. U.S. Air Force General John Hyten, then head of Air Force Space Command, told lawmakers in 2016, referring to the development of capabilities that would totally destroy enemy satellites and create debris. Also, CCS is much more cost-effective than deploying anti-satellite missiles. A single CCS could be used repeatedly against different targets, unlike anti-satellite missiles which can be used only once. The U.S. Air Force also recently began studying the possibility of utilizing the YAL-1A airborne laser for missions other than missile defense. The airborne laser, or ABL, is mounted in a modified 747-400F aircraft and uses a powerful laser to intercept ballistic missiles hundreds of miles away. It could theoretically be pointed up instead of sideways and destroy a satellite, probably simply by overheating it so that its electronics fail. Space will be the new domain of warfare going forward. President Trump said during the signing ceremony of U.S. Space Force, which allocated $738 billion defense spending, space is the world's newest war-fighting domain. Amid grave threats to our national security, American superiority in space is absolutely vital. And we're leading, but we're not leading by enough. But very shortly, we'll be leading by a lot. It's clear that with CCS, the U.S. Space Force is having a good start. As the CCS has more upgrades, it will get increasingly powerful, enabling it to take out sophisticated military satellites that have extensive 
anti-jamming capabilities. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.